On Larry King Now, it's Ben Schwartz. I get to kind of be a nut job. I'm like a cartoon, I'm like a cartoon character. You who liked him? Loved him because he was so sure he was nailing it at all times. Last year, yep. people realized that John Ralphio looked like Steve from Stranger Things. These are two pop culture references I can't imagine you know, but I love that you're saying this. Person you trade places with for a day. Oh man, there's an intelligent, beautiful answer. Oh, you know what, I can say you. What would that okay. feel like? Weirdest shit. Yeah, you didn't like it. Let me get another one. Um, How do you know I, I didn't said, like it? I, I liked it. Good I liked it. You looked down, you didn't even care. Do you do an impression of me? And I'm actually very good at it. Say any sentence and I'll say it back to you uh, exactly as you said it. In your, in your cadence and in your voice. What's your favorite Simpsons character? Oh, what your favorite Simpsons character? You think that's me? Plus, Donald Duck in it. Donald Duck is in the new one, by the way, yeah. But Donald was my Give me favorite. one more famous duck. If you could do this, one more famous duck. You gave me Donald, give me one more. There could Daffy, be anything. I like that. You did great today. I'm really proud of you. This is just the beginning of an incredible 30 minutes. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now, our special guest, Ben Schwartz. The Emmy Award-winning actor, writer, director, you know him from Parks and Recreation, House of Lies, This Is Where I Leave You, and Funny or Dies, the earliest show. Mm. Ben Star... Mm. I'm just ben happy. Mm. Ben stars in the revival of DuckTales as Dewey <laughs> and has a new book in the works called Things You Should Already Know About Dating, You Fucking Idiot. Yeah! Yes, you still I can't, curse, huh? Can't wait. No, only on this show. Okay, never... I never cursed ever in my pre-life. In your, what about in personal life? Never? Oh, yeah, in personal life, oh, of like course, a, but on, like the a air, sailor. on the air, never. It's still hard to say it on the air. Do you feel like you curse more when you're jubilant or when you're upset? Stop asking me questions. This There's going to be a ton of... I have a ton of questions for okay, Larry. I'm going to help you, Ben. You tell me when I'm allowed... Can you point to me when I'm allowed to ask? Okay. Great, thank you, DuckTales is coming back after 25 years. You're in it. Do, do, did you watch it? I did as a kid. It was one of my favorite shows. It used to come out. I grew up in Riverdale in the Bronx, and then used to come home with David Fernandez and Jose Fernandez. We used to watch it every single day. There's something called the Disney Afternoon, which was. I'm happy I get to explain this stuff to you. This Please. makes me. Ex I never very, saw Ducktales. I, I, I didn't assume you had, but I want you to watch the revival. It was th it was a bunch of different cartoon shows in a row, and for me, it was like the thing I most connected with as a kid. It was what I didn't read as much as a child. I read Calvin and Hobbes, and this is the stuff I connected with, which made my magic. All magic about ducks. Crazy. It's all about ducks. Donald, Donald Duck in it? Donald Duck is in the new one, by the way, yeah. But Donald was my Give me favorite. one more famous duck. If you could do this, one more famous duck. You gave me Donald, give me one more. In the world, it could Daffy, be anything. I like Daffy. You did great today. I'm really proud of you. This is just the beginning of an incredible 30 minutes. They said if I do well enough, they spread it to 90 minutes. How do you get into the mind of a duck? <laughs> all right. Uh, you put on some Barry White. I mean, to be, to really play someone well, Brando told me this, I hate to drop names. Oh, how many names are you going to drop, King? Excuse you. That's Brando one. We should have a mark. It's hard to get into the voice. This is Herbie Brando or Marlon? Sid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's a third baseman. <laughs> Which team? Minor league? Uh, professional? Minor league. Minor league. Little Rock. Little Rock. Yeah, played good. Not well. Good. <laughs> Uh, Marlon Brando told you what? Uh, in order to get into a character, to get into a character, you have to under, you have to be able to observe characters, and the problem is when you get well known, characters are observing you. Oh, that's interesting. So in other words, you can't sit in a restaurant when everyone's looking at you and you observe them. That's so uh, do you observe ducks? <laughs> you start with such <laughs> legendary wisdom, and you end it with, do you have... Well, you're playing a duck. I am, but the, the essence, you're right. Your question is correct, uh, but my, I play, in essence, this is a kid. When I play this duck, it's not as much a duck as it is a kid, a young kid who just wants to do everything, and, and uh, he starts off like, you know, they lived in a houseboat, and now he gets to live in the most, you know, fancy, rich place in the universe. His, uh, Uncle Scrooge uh, is this, uh, is like the wealthiest duck in the world. I guess. And so now we get to move into this thing. So I play him with the idea of, like, I want to go on adventures. I want to do this. I play him with a kid that always wanted to do these things that didn't feel you, important until now. You like writing. You like doing everything, right? So do you. You like being a duck? I like... <laughs> you, have a project, you have a project with Will Ferrell and Seth Rogen. What can you tell me about it? Um, uh, 
uh, I'm not allowed to talk about it a, a ton, but it's like an action comedy. It's one. Uh, it's it's a script that I wrote uh, for Good Universe and Gary Sanchez, which is both of their production companies. But it's an exciting one because those two production companies, I think, are two of the fun made up of two of the funniest human beings. Are you in it? Uh, yes, I get to play something in it, which, as as I've learned, is uh, I've written a lot of. I've sold four scripts to four different uh, studios. Um, and oh. now I'm trying to sell stuff with me attached as my. Have, have any of the scripts been produced? I'm so happy uh, that you brought that up. Of course not. No, none of them have been made. Um, they're all sitting there. Um, uh, so you are a failure. Yeah. So in my head. Except for Parks and Recreation. Now. Sure. So basically, the only thing I've succeeded in my life is Parks and Recreation. Which you did not I write. I stumbled here like Mr. Bean. I which didn't even you, mean to show up here. Which you did not write. I did not write Parks and Recreation. But Parks and Recreation. Uh, I think when people look back on it, will be one of the best writing staffs of all time. I truly believe the writers on that show were some of the most special group of human beings you'll ever uh, meet. Does writing? Did make... you watch Parks and Rec? What? What's your show? What do you What do you watch right now? Not sports. Not sports related. What do you watch? TV or TV wise? I, I watch Seinfeld's old. Of course. You can't say that. All my years on the air, yeah. I never got to watch him. Seinfeld. Of course, I was on Nine O'clock Live. Every yeah. Night, so I never saw Seinfeld. Okay. I admit you didn't that. have someone with a VHS player. I don't know how to work them. <laughs> oh, I have a great question for you. When is the last time you typed on a computer? Answer honestly. When's never, the last time? I've never typed on a computer. This is true, right? This is true. You've yeah. never typed on a computer before. I've never uh, sent a text. That's cr so. Someone's been texting me as you for like a I don't, year. I don't have an iPhone. What do you use? Takes out. <laughs> takes out one of the rotary. Flip phone. Oh wow! You make calls, you receive calls. Remember? Show me how you, you show me how it works. Show me how it works. What how it works? It's a phone. You dial. <laughs> how does it work? Where are you from? Another planet? <laughs> okay, one more question. Then you're getting you can ask on my more. nerves. No, no, no. Well, I'm, I'm having great. fun. I feel like we're right. in a family together. Do you hate belts or love suspenders? I like them both for different reasons. Will you ever wear them both at the same time? No, that's ugly. never. Of course not. Oh my God! Go on with the question. I didn't mean. Nerd? So, I'm so sorry. A nerd would wear two at the same. That's time. like socks and sandals, right? You can't do yeah, both. Oh my God! <laughs> socks and sandals would be like eating steak with milk. Ugh. If we ever do a long form improv show together, can we call our team Socks and Sandals? Good idea. I'm being serious. You come on stage with me. We'll do improv hey, together. I'm on uh, on that thing that you're on. With the Help me out. Funny or Die. Yeah. And they got me as just my head doing interviews 100 years from now. <laughs> That's amazing. Our guest is Ben Schwartz. So far, you've really learned a lot, haven't you? Up next, we'll talk about improv. <laughs> That's and the dating. first segment. Uh, uh, stay, that was the first segment. I'm going to ruin with this us. whole thing. We'll be back with more of Ben Schwartz. And he'll be here, appearing here a lot. He may be sitting in for me. <laughs> Back with Ben Schwartz. He's got a book coming. He's starring in DuckTales on Disney Channel. Were you a comic kid? I, I read comic books quite a bit when I was a kid. I collected basketball cards and Marvel cards and like. Uh, Were you class comic? Yes. My mom was. My mom is a Bronx school teacher for the past 45 years, and I was in the Bronx when I was going to elementary school. So there's a lot of stories when I was a young child that have been handed down through generations, which I don't know if they're true or not, because it's like playing a game of telephone and stuff like What'd that. What'd your dad do? My dad started. My dad was a social worker at the at the at the Y uh, M the, H A. Yes, the Y M H A in the Bronx, and then he moved to real estate. Um, but yeah, and then my sister. I have a sister who's three years older than me, and she's a psychologist. And everybody helps people but me. You were from Riverdale, right? Yes. That's wealthy Bronx, right? Yeah, it's like the Jewish, like the northern part of the Bronx where there's a, a bunch of, or when I was living there, a bunch of Jewish people were living there, yeah. How far from Yankee Stadium? Ooh, Yankee Stadium was not that far at all. But my dad grew up in 176 in Grand Ave, which is right near uh, Yankee Stadium. Were you, were you from the Bronx? No, Brooklyn. Brooklyn, of course. But Bron Yankees was 161st. Are you a Dodgers fan then? Of course. Oh, my, what? What are you out of your mind? From Brooklyn. You studied psychology and anthropology. Yes. Do you use them both in your daily life? I think I do. I went How? to Union College right now. I'm analyzing the hell out of you. I'm really trying to get into it, trying to figure it out. You've done improv for years, right? Yeah, improv is the thing that got me into comedy. Well, I started off as a freelance monologue writer for uh, The Late Show with David Letterman, uh, a gentleman who used to host a late night show when you were on CNN. 
I appeared on that show quite a few times. I know, I've seen you on that show. You're fantastic on that show. Thank you, I had a lot of fun on that would show. Would you ever want to do one of those? Oh, that was that would have been easy. I'm telling you the truth. I don't want to sound pompous. Please. Late night? Come on. What a joke. And I, I used to do five hours of radio. I said, that's a joke. That show, they call it hard. You got 16 writers. You go out. You could even bomb in the monologue, and that works for you, right? <laughs> yep. Then you get guests. You sit down. You got eight minutes with a guest. Fluff, fluff, fluff. You got a sidekick. Sits there like a dummy. This is amazing. Sure you got a band that plays, and they call it, boy, that's tough. You get to work at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. You tape at 5. You're done at 6. They pay you $32 million a year. Wow. Wow. I can phone it in. <laughs> Why do you like doing improv? Uh, uh, great transition. I think that's why you're, they call you king, uh, the king of transitions. It's because, for me, I love the idea of making stuff up on the spot. When I saw it for the first time at the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater in New York, I went, and it was four chairs. People came out with absolutely nothing, nothing prepared. And the fact that they could create an entire show in front of me and make an audience of, it's a small, it's like 120 people left, was... I thought it was beautiful, and I loved it so much. And the like, idea that you fail together or succeed together, I think, differentiates it from stand-up, which is incredibly hard and incredible as well. But I, I love that idea. You've written a book about dating. Are you good at it or bad at it? Um, I feel I like I'm learning from it. You still date? Yes, of course. Have um, you ever been close to marriage? Not close to marriage, but I've, I've, I have been with people that uh, I cared about a great deal. The book oh. is called... Things you should already know about dating, you f***ing idiot. And it's all, it, it spurred from the idea of uh, I was dating someone and I kind of realized that there's some chivalrous stuff that is lost between generations. And millennials now may not know these things. And Like was, opening the car door. For that's them. truly one of the basics that... They don't do that, millennials. I don't believe it's at, done as much or all those things. And then in my head, I was like, well, what else don't I know personally? And I was with my friend Laura Moses and she goes, what else don't I know? It's like, this would be a great book. And so what it is, is it's a tip, and then a guy and a girl talking about the tip, going back and forth, saying why it's great or why it's bad or something like that. Do no millennial, do you call each other for dates? Do people call up and say, I'll see you Saturday that's, night, I'll pick see, you up at 8 o'clock? That's one of the things. I think everything now is done through text messages or apps. So I think, I, I think, and there's something funny to this, that when someone calls someone personally, the other person will get scared or think it's like a stalkery thing. Or like for me, uh, <laughs> in my family, we wait for like someone to walk into the door before you leave. When you're in your car, you know, like anytime my dad or mom drop me off or you wait for them to get into the house, make sure they're okay. Right. So now if you drop someone off on a date and I'm looking at them get into their house like this, I look like a, a creep. I think that dating culture is kind of getting hurt by the idea of these apps showing that there's unlimited don't, amount of possibilities. Don't you find texting impersonal? I think there is a skill set to texting, and I think it is. I think it has become uh, impersonal. Do you think that, are you, what's your relationship status now? Married. Married. Do you think, what, what do you think your life would be like if you had, although you've never used the, a phone before, if you had apps in which to date people? I would never have, I don't think I'd have used it. No. I, I would have been anti all I miss that typewriter. You miss the typewriter. A regular typewriter. A yeah. typewriter that types. Yeah. I miss the rotary phone. You stick your finger in, it always worked. Why'd well, you lick it beforehand? That wasn't necessary. You licked it before you went like I this? I licked it because I don't know why I licked it. <laughs> what do you do to that phone, Larry? Coming up next, <laughs> <laughs> secret talent, strange jobs, and stranger things with Ben Schwartz. We'll be right back on this, the weirdest of all Larry King now. So don't go away. Tell me about John Ralphio. John Ralphio. Did you like him? Loved John Ralphio. John Ralphio is a character I played in a show called Parks and Recreation. I know, we discussed that. Uh huh. I'm happy. I just want to make sure that you were alert. You're there. Um, and it was great because that was, I got to play with people like Amy Poehler, who I think of as a legend of comedy, true legend of comedy. And uh, that cast was incredible. And I get to kind of be a nut job. I'm like a cartoon, I'm like a cartoon character. Did you who liked him? Loved him because he was so sure he was nailing it at all times. He never thought he was being a douchebag or abrasive. He thought that he was just being the most charismatic person. Uh, Amy Poehler described the character as like a puppy where if he peed on the rug, you can't yell at him. You're just like, oh, John Ralphio. And I loved, I love that description. Okay. It's, it's really fun. Can I ask you a question? Last year, yep. people realized that John Ralphio 
looked like Steve from Stranger Things. These are two pop culture references I can't imagine you know, but I love that you're saying this. They, they told me this. Okay, great. Will you show up on Stranger Things? I would love to show up on Stranger Why Things. Why don't they have you if you look like the guy? <laughs> tell them, Larry. You have more pull in this industry than I do. You make tell your own who? goddamn giggles. Tell, them, put the camera tell them to put me on Stranger Things. Put them on Stranger Things. And I want to be in a Marvel movie, if you could do put that. Put them in a Marvel movie. And a Pixar movie. Make them an action hero. That put them in a great. Pixar movie. What's a Jewish uh, superhero name that you can think of? If this was your two cents, a Jewish superhero name. Sky Bloomberg. <laughs> <laughs> Sky Bloomberg. Oh no! Oh no! The world is collapsing. We need a hero. Here comes Sky uh, Bloomberg. Bloomberg. Out of the sky. What does he do? The... Throw what? matzah at you? He, he doesn't have a cape. Of course he does. What does he use? Looks like a rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> he goes into a phone booth and turns from a rabbi. No, he turns as a regular a guy hero. into a guy with payas. Payas. And a and a, a the hat. Villain, the rabbi's everything. hat. It's villainy benches. Villain. That's and like the slow motion action the hero that when he's wrapping himself in sweats dripping down. Sky Hi, Bloomberg. I can tell you're writing them already. Okay. Hello there. That's his big expression. Let me hear it. When he confronts a killer or anything. Yeah. Hello there. <laughs> Which, I'm going to give you Beast Guy for one second. I'm going to give you a perfect scenario. This is your tagline. Okay. This is what you say. Ready? We're fighting. We've been having this huge fight. We've been with guns and knives. You finally have me, and you have the gun right over my head. And right before you shoot me, the biggest villain in your, in your life. What do you say? Goodbye and good luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, now, <laughs> we now play a game of If You Only Knew. I throw questions at you, Ben. Oh, man. Who was your childhood celebrity crush? Ooh, you know what I loved? I loved Demi Moore in Disclosure. Hubba, hubba. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. Get me out of there, huh? Demi Moore in Disclosure? Yeah, yeah, Give me absolutely. A break. Secret talent. Um, um, I'm pretty, I'm, pr I'm, I'm pr a pretty good shooter at basketball. Person you trade places with for a day. Oh man, there's an intelligent, beautiful answer. Oh, you know what? I could say you. What would that okay. feel like? Weirdest job. No, you didn't like it. Let me get another one. Um, How do you know I didn't say, like it? I, I liked it. No, I you, liked it. You looked down, you didn't even care. I'm going to say, um, I want to feel, I would love to have the skill set of a Meryl Streep or a Tom Hanks. I'd love to be them one day and see what it feels like to that, have that control of your craft. Weirdest job you've ever had? I sold sneakers at a place called Athlete's Foot. I also worked at the petting zoo at the Bronx Zoo. And I, really? Yep, and I, I worked, and there's a llama that I loved, and there's a picture that my mom took of me feeding a llama while sitting on there, and that was, I think, the most status I've ever had in anything in my entire life. Great zoo. Oh, great zoo, by the way. Guilty pleasure. Um, not guilty because it's cool now, but I love musicals because my mom was a music teacher. So we, I just saw, we saw Dear Evan Hansen, we saw Waitress. And was he, was Evan, how good is that? Did you interview Ben Platt? No, I Man, hear he's it unbelievable. Is, how does he do it eight times a week? It's year? astounding to me. He, he, every ounce of his being is in every word and it's, it made me, it made me so, uh, I was in awe of him and then jealous that he was able to do that. Really, is that good? Yeah. Where did he come from? He was in a couple movies, but I don't know. Maybe from your heart and soul. Can you make sure before we run out of time that I get to ask you two questions? Yeah, okay. I really, and okay, okay. Okay. I think you're great. Do you do an impression of me? I had to do one for a Kevin Pollock's podcast once. Oh, yeah. I'm very, very, you may want to get tight on this. I'm very good at impressions. All right, get tight. Sincerely, and I don't want, and okay, and I know that when people do impressions, uh, you've heard yours a bunch, but I'm actually very good at it. Say any sentence and I'll say it back to you. Uh, Exactly as you said, in your in your cadence and in your voice. Thank What's you. your favorite Simpsons character? Oh, what your favorite Simpsons character? You think that's me? You you hearing me correct? You hearing me correct? Keep going, keep going. I'm I really think, close. I think you've got it. I think you got it. You're very good, Ben. You're very good. <laughs> What superpower would you like to have? Um, I think I'd love to be able to fly because I am a little bit afraid of heights. And I think if I had control of it, because when you're in a plane, you don't have any control of it. You don't have trouble flying in a plane. I fly so much for work that I'm fine. But I, this is what I realized. The first couple times I was in a plane, it was incredibly turbulent. And that's what I thought all plane rides were. And then uh, slowly I learned as... Uh, I learned that I was in a Wright, Wright Brothers plane. I went through a period where turbulence scared me to death. Still does. And now I kind of like, what the hell? Tell me why. Is that? I'm 83 years old. So, but that's not. I think not I beat thing. the odds all the time, and then I've discovered 
all planes have turbulence. Yeah. And t and I sat with a pilot once who explained to me Sally Sally, that yeah. turbulence is a way of life and that the plane cannot, cannot turn over. Okay, but, as, but didn't that happen in a movie? As, as bad as it gets, that's because the, the guy was drunk and he hit the wrong <laughs> stuff. Wait, you just said it could never happen. And Denzel then you... Washington. Yes. Because he had, he didn't pay attention to what he was doing and he turned the wrong switch. So so you may I make say the plane this? Planes over. can't turn over unless a pilot you by mistake touch the wrong switch. A pilot I'm not nearly as confident. What I learned is exactly what you said. I look at the flight attendants. If the flight attendants are nervous, I, I try my best not to be nervous. Because I was on a flight once where the flight I saw a flight attendant freak out from the turbulence. And it made me realize that we're all we're all gonna die. I also had this feeling of, although I know this isn't true, uh, before before I was acting, whatever. For some reason, in first class, I saw a you or a celebrity that I realized in my head. I would be like, oh well, this this plane can't go down. There's no way Julianne Moore is dying or something like that. Yeah, oh, people, I used to do that. Yeah, I would I would try. I to would justify get it. nervous sometimes if I see the stewardess, if I think the pilot has called the stewardess, and she's going. <laughs> yes, on the phone. And then she calls a stewardess from the back. Uh-oh. Game over. But I'll give you a quick funny story. I was on a plane that lost an engine. Are you serious? And we're flying from Salt Lake to Washington and United Airlines. And... Oh, they can't catch a break. Boom! Boom! And a stewardess goes running forward. And she, the pilot gets on and says, I've been flying for 25 years. I've never lost an engine. We could fly to Washington with one engine. So I was sitting next to a guy. Remember, I'm doing a show called Larry King Live, yeah. right? What year is this? Uh, They're all the same. 99, 2000. I graduated high school then. I said to the guy next to me who was a fighter pilot in World War II, I said to him, uh, just for instance, what would happen if the other engine blew. And he said to me, <laughs> they would change the name of your show. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best perk of being a celebrity? Um, my hope is that if my family needed, I could help them out in a hospital way or something like that. Something, something in terms of I can help them out with a doctor or maybe, uh, and the, the one that I've utilized is the idea of taking my mom to a musical which I wouldn't have been able to get tickets to or something like that. Did you see Hello Dolly yet? No, but my mom just got tickets uh, for, have you seen it? Yeah, I hear it's terrific. How many times do you interview Bette Midler? Five or six. Is there some, is there a human being that you interviewed and a question that you regretted over the course of your 60 years of interviewing human beings? No, but I regretted not having asked the question. Can you, can you tell me what that is? Or yes, is I had on the head of Apple. At what time? Who, which human being? The second head of Apple, who was a wonderful guy, by the way, still alive. Okay. And it was a two hour radio interviewer. I had him on for the whole two hours. And then we start taking calls. And he said, You know, uh, you never asked him why he fired Steve Jobs. Yeah. He fired Steve Jobs. Yeah. I didn't know that at the time. Why didn't I ask that? I mean, that was stuff. That's, that's one of your biggest regret out of uh, po politicians and... No, and no, that comes to mind. It popped out. You that's asked, amazing. I yeah. asked. Now, can I ask you some social media questions? Yes, sir. Thank you, Ben. We'll do that when we come back with Ben Schwartz, the duck. The duck? <laughs> We're booming in. Here we come. And Larry. Okay, ready? <laughs> Here we come. Okay. And coming in. And... Larry. Larry, can I ask you a question, Larry? Um, if you had the choice and you weren't just allowed to write your name on a gravestone and you had to have a, a sentence, something that you feel like defined either your life or your career, not to say that one takes precedence over the other, uh, what would you have on, I don't have an answer for this before you ask me, but what would you have on your gravestone? Something I to sum up. I won't be right back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Some social media yeah, questions he's for He's doing great, guys. It's insane I'm this a good is guess. his first ever show. Canadian Linz, what do you think John Ralphio would be up to these days? Oh, can I tell you that there's an Easter egg in the final episode of Parks that not many people know about, that uh, the character that Billy Eichner plays is on a plane and a stewardess hands him uh, champagne, and if you freeze the frame and zoom in on the champagne, you find out that John Ralphio is making champagne in the future, and that's what he, he somehow 
evaded. Uh, pictures on the label. It's his Saperstein is my last name. Um, and um, you know who played my father in that show? Who you're gonna love? Henry Winkler. I and really clip my dad, the best. One of the nicest people first ever day, to First day I met him, uh, he had heard that my back hurt, so he gave me a back massage. Yeah, oh, there's and no fixed one like, it. The no best. one like him. Okay. Uh, Cheeky Turnip wants to know, <laughs> you said, if you had to choose one for the rest of your life, acting or improv? Um, it's so hard because they both kind of bleed into each other. I can act and improvise okay. at the same time. Can Louisa, I ask you a real quick? Louisa by the Bay. Great. Then your last one. Thank you, sir. With your upcoming dating book, what are your thoughts on scripting a rom com? I'd like to see something funny and true without the usual cliches. Do you think you could work wonders? I, um, the second movie Romantic I ever comedy. sold with um, Imagine, which is Brian Grazer and Ron Howard's company, and I sold it to Universal, is a movie called No Hearts Club, and it's a romantic comedy about a gentleman who doesn't have the ability to fall in love. And it follows the idea of this person trying to figure out if he's capable of doing it and how he could break free and, and do those things. And does he meet a girl? Um, <laughs> it, it hasn't come out yet. It has a nice, the thing I like about it is it, exactly what they said. The beats of it uh, act true, to what I believe would happen in real life, and the ending of it would act true as well. I have a question for you. You've been in broadcasting for 60 years? 60. 60, six zero years. Um, you doing this show and continuing to work every day, I believe you work three days a week or four days a week still, four. right? Four days a week still. Do you find it a necessity? Do you, is there, of course there's joy in it, but is the joy the thing that drives you to keep coming into work every day, or is it a necessity to keep doing something and, and, and something along those lines? It's both. Okay. It's a joy to do it. I never get tired of asking questions. It doesn't feel like work? Even when you... No, it never. Twice, six years I haven't worked. Really? Oh, yeah. I go to a job. I mean, I go to here. I go to a place. I ask questions. But work? Come on. I know. You know who works? Bus driver on yep. Madison Avenue. Yep. He works. Construction guy building a building. You know, in Lower yeah. East New York, Police officers. He, he's worked. Yeah. Cop works. That's amazing. Firemen work. So how lucky are you to have found that Very lucky. key to your life? Lucky. I can, oh, luck is a big part. I'd rather be, Babe Ruth said it. I'd rather be lucky. Second name drop. I'd rather be lucky than good. Ooh, I like that a lot. Luck uh, has a lot to do, I feel like, with this industry. I think the more talented you get, the luckier you might be. But I think luck has a lot to do with this industry in a, in a big way. I asked Louis Neiser, the great lawyer, if he ever got lucky as a lawyer. Do you ever get lucky in a... He says, oh yeah, you get lucky at 4 a.m. in a law library. Oh, that's interesting. Harder you work, the luckier you get. The harder you work, the luckier you get. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I'm getting sort of... I love it, please. All right, let's play It's My Two Cents. Which oh, I, I love it, Larry. Well, let's we have do to, it. Now, this has to be one sentence. But this also has to be on the... We, none no, of us no, are thinking about anything. No other thoughts. Describe describe exactly what the, what My Two Cents is. I write, a, I write a... I've been doing it for years. I used to write it as a column for USA Today, for the Miami Herald, and now I do it every Sunday on my, on my, web, on my uh, Twitter link. It's My Two Cents. I send out 25 items that I just dictate them, and I don't send them, I dictate them, I used to type them. They just come to my mind, they all have to be one sentence, right? Okay, that's great, one sentence. There's no actor like Wallace Berry. <laughs> that's uh, just the one thing just popped into me. Uh, Cottonelle wet wipes should be loved by all. If you put too much butter on popcorn, you kill it. Oh my goodness. Oh, I cannot agree with that more, by the way. We can get into big deba debates. No, you don't have that. to agree with it. That's the best thing about it. <laughs> um, it's not the way it works, Ben. All right, fine. I'll just think of a random thing. I've um, never had an I got it, I got it. Um, matzo, ball, matzo ball soup should be hotter than regular soup. I've never had an affinity for pumpkin pie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's, why, do, why do pumpkin seeds exist? I've never read a good biography of Benito Mussolini. <laughs> See? Why do you have a microphone in front of you? That, that makes no sense. It's you're, not you're, plugged in. You're pl aren't you as loud well, like this, me? It's a fake. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that just came to my head. Go, keep going. We're in it now. Like all things, life is a fake. Oh, I like Ooh. that. I like that very much. Um... Baseball seems boring, but I'll watch it every now and then. 
Baseball is my favorite sport, period. I know, that's why I said it. <laughs> ben, we're out of time. But I want to tell you this, Ben. In the history of annals, there is and was and will never be a better duck. <laughs> oh, come on! Thanks to my guest, Ben Schwartz. <laughs> Thank duck you, Larry. Tales <laughs> premieres this summer. And Ben's new book, Things You Should Already Know About Dating, You F***ing Idiot. Still hard to say that. You're great. We'll be published this October. And as always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things, and I'll see you next time.